link down below as always to credit cyberpunk for publishing the patch notes i'm just gonna kind of read through it i'm also incredibly sick i don't feel good boohoo and the patch notes are kind of long so right here the free update 2.0 of cyberpunk is being rolled out for pc ps5 and xbox series x and s it brings an overhaul to a number of gameplay mechanics and core game features such as the police system the perk trees along with various fixes and improvements these changes apply to the base game and are available to all players on pc and what they're calling current gen but it's really next gen but we won't get into that because the terminology is really wonky and it's free of charge there's more to come on september the 26th for owners of the cyberpunk 2077 phantom liberty expansion you can continue playing from an existing save, but in order to have the best experience with the extensive changes that they've made, they recommend starting a brand new playthrough. Come September the 26th, owners of Phantom Liberty will also have the option to jump straight into the story of the expansion by starting a new game with a character that's already adequately leveled up. Because changes to crucial game systems are extensive, they recommend uninstalling pre-2.0 mods until the modding community has had a chance to update them. Outdated mods can disrupt the experience in many, many ways, and in some situations cause critical errors. Please note that the change, <clears throat> excuse me, as PC system requirements were announced in June comes into effect with this update. It's especially important, <clears throat> excuse me, really sick. Especially important to note that running the game on an SSD <clears throat> is now a requirement. They advise against running the game on a regular hard drive or on an SD card on the Steam Deck due to the lower bandwidth which may cause new content to not stream properly. This doesn't necessarily mean that 2.0 won't launch using the previous minimum requirements. However, because it wasn't tested with them, they won't be actively supporting them. They cannot guarantee the game will work, kind of like when the game first came out. I know, I still like going on about that. They recommend considering an upgrade to ensure a more stable gaming experience should you want to or need to. You can also revert to the 1.63 version of the game available on Steam and GOG. See how to do it here. And uh, there you go. So this I'm not going to read. Okay, but I'm just going to skim through it so you get a gist. I think it's better if you just read it for yourself. Combat, new police system. So now the police will chase you when you commit a crime, whether on foot or whether on foot or in a vehicle. Um, vehicle combat, they added the option to engage in combat while driving a vehicle from either first person or third person. While driving, you can use pistols and submachine guns and health items. Combat AI enhancements, they made numerous improvements to the enemy Netrunner AI, faster detection by enemies when you're walking, improvements for scenarios where a group of NPCs can join another group in combat against you, net running changes, rebalanced RAM costs, removed the option to use breach protocol on enemies, other health items and grenades now have a limited number of charges that recharge over time after being used. Sorry, stamina is no longer drained outside of combat for actions like sprinting, sliding, or jumping. Perks and skills, a complete perk tree overhaul. They merged the previous skills into five new ones, Headhunter, Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo Engineer. These are not restricted by their corresponding attribute levels. On existing playthroughs, your progression on old skills <coughs> excuse me, has been transferred to their new counterpart. Introduced new kinds of progression shards. Cyberware armor is now provided primarily by cyberware as a result. Clothing's purpose is mostly cosmetic. Clothing items no longer have mod slots and only some items provide bonuses. Weapons change the unique effect of some iconic weapons to better reflect their distinctive features. Added smoke grenades. Uh, removed the scope slot from the light machine gun. Vehicles, traffic, NPC vehicles can now switch lanes to avoid obstacles. Driving with a quest-related NPC in your vehicle no longer disables traffic in the occupied lane. <coughs> 
Other added new user settings to help configure vehicle camera and controls. You can now also choose between three different third-person camera distancing distances when driving a vehicle. Uh, implemented various changes and tweaks to vehicle performance and handling. That's all listed here. Balance and economy for the NPCs. All NPCs now scale to your level. Enemy difficulty is no longer dependent on what area of Night City you're in. This is going to anger some people, but I have to admit, I am so excited. They should have done like Assassin's Creed, or better yet, their own game, The Witcher 3. Scale on or off? That's it. So I'm excited, but I have to admit, I'm angry for those that don't like the scaling. I don't, I don't know if you could turn that off. All NPCs now scale to your level. Pretty straightforward. Enemy difficulty is no longer dependent on what area of... Right, because they all scale with you. So that's, that's interesting. Enemies will have different tiers depending on the faction they belong to. Some NPC art types will feature low, medium, high armor. All resistances for regular NPCs have been removed. <laughs> Rebalance game difficulty to increase the challenge at higher difficulties. Weapons now scale damage based on their tier. Loot now scales to your level. Removed excessive findable loot in the game, such as loot that distracts from the scenes. NPCs no longer drop clothing. <laughs> They're not dropping their pants anymore. Crafting and upgrading. Apart from cyberware, now only iconic weapons can be upgraded. Vendors, you can now access the wardrobe feature through the clothing vendors, audio, new audio radio stations, UI. The quest journal now has a new cleaner look. Uh, overhaul the phone UI, improved D-pad navigation. So basically, we're getting the game we should have gotten a couple of years ago. And then a bunch of quests fixed. I'm not going to read this shit, just being honest. Uh, stability and performance, multiple fixes and improvements related to stability and optimization, then a bunch of miscellaneous shit. You can now choose between different, three different control schemes for controllers, classic dynamic alternative, added Ukrainian text localization, PC specific, got some, some funky stuff there. The crowd density setting has been moved from the gameplay tab to the graphics tab. Makes sense. Uh console specific change to target upscaling resolution on xbox series x and ps5 don't ask me what that was and ps5 in performance mode from dynamic 4k to dynamic 1800p for improved performance and image quality so there you go as always if you like the video go ahead give it a thumbs up so they say it greatly helps support the channel with the algorithm and if you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. We'll bend it in half, twist it, break it off in your ass. I'll backhand you so hard. You'll be living in a world like Cyberpunk 2077 Update 1.0. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, exactly. I don't even need to finish that sentence. It's obvious what I would want. But what do you want? Exactly. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.